it's such a warm audience and such big and wonderful speakers. I want to talk a little bit about what I know. I want to share a little bit who I am. I'm going to talk about this topic that says life is electric. I know that is a little bit like shocking, this title, provocative. Basically, what I want to do is putting some bricks to build a bridge between the biochemistry point of view that is our mainstream with an electric point of view that is just one part of the energy. Uh, and I also want to connect a little bit also science with consciousness. That is one of the things that I love the most. So let's start with this first part. Life is an electric process from biochemistry to electricity. I, here you can read a couple of quotes. One of them is from Albert St. Georgi, that was Nobel Prize, that says, what drives life is the dust electric, electric, uh, a little electric current kept tight by the sunshine. All the complexities of intermediary metabolism are but the lace work around this basic fact. Or Nikola Tesla that says, you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. So I was, uh, I was in a conference in 2016, is there, in Prague, in the Czech Republic, and there was a presentation that was shocking for me, because the title was this, On the Origin of Life Based on Coherent Modes of Water and Matter. And it was very interesting, because it was one of the first times that I listened to someone that was trying to explain the origin of life, first of all, and second, based on electricity. And I thought that it was very nice, because, of course, life is much bigger than what our intellect can understand. And it's a little bit also provocative trying to explain the origin of life just talking about electricity. But the explanation he did was really, really interesting. He was talking about, basically, a concept that I will come back later, that is the concept of coherence and how everything is about coherence and how the coherence and the electromagnetic coherence is sustained thanks to the water, to the st structure of the water. So this um, was a, a, a starting point for me also to start thinking about this origin of life or trying to describe life. Then I found Mei Wan Ho, that is a great author, is a great scientist. And she says that life is an electric process. She explains that it's not a property, it's not a structure, it's not something material. Life is a process of being an organizing whole. And uh, it also was very inspiring for me, her job. But I want to start talking about something that is previous to that, that is about paradigms. I normally start with this because I think that paradigms are really important. It's about our beliefs is our, our, about our mindset. And it is very, very important for me because it depends on how do I think, which are my beliefs, which is my paradigm, I'm going to make decisions. And I'm going to understand life. It, that means that I'm going to understand health, and I'm going to understand how can I preserve or improve health. So we come from the, our Western world, come from a mainstream that is based on these guys that you have here. Okay, we can start, for example, with Darwin. Darwin was saying evolution is possible because uh, the different organisms are fighting. Is everything about who is the strongest, who is the fastest, who is the one that is going to win in this kind of battle of organisms? Because the environment is limited in resources, and as it is limited, we, we need to fight. This is about big organisms. In another fractal of space and time, some years later, it came Pasteur, and Pasteur was basically saying the same. This is about fighting. There are enemies, and the enemy is outside us, and we have to fight against this enemy that is disturbing us. Okay, then we have in parallel, we have Descartes that, oh my God, he did a little bit mess in our thought because he was separating the inner world from the outer world and yes, everything that I can think is the only thing that it exists. If I cannot think, it doesn't exist. And especially this disassociation of our inner and outer world was one of the worst things <laughs> that it has happened to us mostly. And then we have Newton that we know that is about determinism. 
if I know if I know the which is the force that I'm applying, I know how long it's going to be, how far it's going to be this ball. Okay, so this brings us a kind of paradigm that is the one that is a mainstream, at least in my country. But then we have at the same time that there was Darwin talking about these biological robots fighting for survival, there was also Lamarck. And Lamarck was saying, it's not that way. The survival comes because the organisms are able to adapt and to react to the environment. The one that is provoking evolution, it's not the fight, it's not the strongest, it's not about that. It's about the cooperation with the environment in another fractal of space and time, instead of talking about big organisms, if we move to small organisms, we have Bechamp. And Bechamp was talking exactly the same. It's not the germ theory of disease, as Pasteur was saying. It's about the terrain. We have been listening to this today, this afternoon, this evening. Uh, it's about the terrain. And depending on that terrain, the different bugs are going to change. For what? To preserve life, because this is the main purpose of all of us. In the same paradigm, we also have other scientists like Pitzinger, and we also can connect there with epigenetics, because it's basically that. It's adaptation to the environment, is evolving according to the environment. And we have also the quantum theory that goes, let's say, totally different from the Newtonian mechanicism, that is the one that we are used to know. So here we have a Western medicine that is based on fighting, is based on enemies, and is understanding that I finish where my skin finishes, which is, we know that is not true. It's based on separation, determinism, mechanicism. In front of that, we can talk about integrated medicine if you want, I don't know which is the best term for defining this, that is based on cooperation, is based on symbiosis, is based on the feeling of unity, something that is systemic, we are not just an addition of independent parts, we are a whole, and we work, our body works as a system, not just as different parts. Okay, so someone, uh, Dr. Gupta, was saying, it's about are we treating or are we healing? And I'm going to go a little bit a step farther, a step harder, <laughs> that is, sometimes I think that this paradigm of our medicine, more than even treating, is about killing. And, and it's, for me, the difference is between are we killing or are we healing? And it's a pity, but sometimes it's this. And we have the best metaphor that we have about this is the antibiotics. Antibiotics means killing life, basically, literally means this. Something what we are doing is killing life. Look at how many things that we are using start with anti. Antibiotics, anti-cancer, anti-inflammatory, anti, 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 or even better, pain killer. This word is this so horrible for me, painkiller. So what are we doing? And that for me is very important because in this paradigm, I'm going to think that the body is doing mistakes. And I'm, as I've been studying many years and I have a PhD and I've been working a lot of years, I know how to fix that because I'm smarter than nature. It's a little bit arrogant, this thought, but this is what we mostly think. The old paradigm brings us a, another thought that is the body doesn't make mistakes. Everything that is happening, every symptom we can detect is about the effort that the body is doing to adapt to an environment and different fractals. Think always in, in terms of fractals. An outer environment of my physical body if we want, but also the inner environment of each one of my cells. The body is trying to adapt to that and is trying to evolve and is trying to survive. And that's why we call symptoms. So I was telling you that I want to put some bricks to bring, to, to build this bridge between electricity and, and biochemistry and electricity. So let's start from what, one of the bases of biochemistry that is the concept of energy in biochemistry, that is the ATP. The metabolism is basically uh, how can we get this energy from the food. So here you have the wonderful Krebs cycle that is about molecules that the, the people that know biochemistry can understand, other people like me that I'm not so used to <laughs> read biochemistry is not so, it's a little bit like uh, difficult to understand. But if we go in these fractals of space and time from a big organism and we are 
looking inside, 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 and we arrive, I'm going to stop in the chemical level, I'm not going to go to the quantum level, but if we stop here, what we see is that everything is made of atoms. And the atoms are combining, are sharing things to create molecules. So everything that we are consider a molecule, a formula, some letters that they're saying that is a complex, basically is something like this. I don't know which is the laser here. It's this. So here we have two atoms and we have two shared electrons. This is a molecule. So finally, when we are even talking about bi biochemistry, we are talking about atoms and electrons. Okay. So when we have a chemical reaction, what is happening? For example, the basic uh, redox reaction. So we have a, uh, an agent that is losing electrons. Where these electrons go? They go to another atom. So basically, it's what I call the dance of the electrons. Are electrons moving from one, from one place to the other place? And these are what we say chemical reactions. So which is the best antioxidant? Electrons directly. We don't need to take supplements so as the supplements gives us electrons so as we can use these electrons. We can directly put electrons with pulse magnetic fields or with any other kind of device. So basically, we can understand this uh, cellular respiration that is in the mitochondria with these graphs, but we can also understand like this. We have different complex, and the complex we've seen that what they're doing is losing electrons or gaining electrons. So basically what we have is a complex that is losing electrons and losing electrons and losing electrons, and another complex that is also exchanging protons. But basically, it's about these electrons that are going down and down and down in the level of energy. And what happens to us when we start running that we also sweat? So these electrons, when they are running and they are dancing, they also sweat. Forgive me this kind of pedagogical explanation. But what happens is that every time that these electrons are moving and jumping from one orbital to the other orbital, what is happening is that they are also emitting electromagnetic radiations. They are emitting in the infrared, that means heat, that's why I say that they are sweating. They also emit in other bands like radio frequency, biophotons, and of course, Electric charges that are moving are creating electric currents. So just with this simple example, you can see that we can understand the whole metabolism in our body just from an electric point of view, with many advantages that I will say. So we have here, I have put here, we emit light. Yes, we all emit light. This is something that no scientist can doubt and not science, no scientists can say that this is not true. We have the mitochondria, we, have, we know that the 50% of the energy is used for creating the ATP, the other 50% of the energy is released in terms of electromagnetic radiation, in infrared, radio frequency, and also visible light. And these, um, these energies, these biophotons, are picked by the microtubules that are making them coherent, but this is another story. So we have, uh, this is the electromagnetic spectrum. This is the way that we engineers represent all the different possibilities of electromagnetic waves. And here you can see that we have 10 to 22 orders of magnitudes. Uh, this is very big and we cannot understand. You can think in a piano with 73 octaves. These are all the different kinds of frequencies that we, we can find. And in at least two thirds of these frequencies, is demonstrated that the living beings, including the human beings, are emitting, at least in two-thirds of this. So in, in, in this um, paradigm, let's say, uh, of bioenergy, for me there are like two key concepts. Uh, one of them is the transmembrane potential. What is this? Most of you will know that. It's the voltage that it is stored in the cell membrane. Why? Because the cell membrane acts as a capacitor. That means that a capacitor is something that has a, a, a plate that is conductor, another one that is also conductor, and in the middle something that is insulator. This is exactly what happens in a, in a membrane. It doesn't matter which kind of membrane, if it's the plasma membrane or is any one of the inner membranes that we have. Here we have the ability to store electricity. And when we have a, a, a capacitor, it also happens another thing. That is, you know that there are many structures in our body, many molecules, that also have the shape of a coil. 
We know the alpha helix proteins, we know the DNA, all of them have this coil shape, this helix shape. And when we have a capacitor and we have a coil, it is, it is creating another kind of dance. The capacitor is giving energy to the coil, the coil is bringing back the energy to the capacitor, and they're swinging. This energy is swinging. This is called resonance. Okay, and depending on how is the, which is the value, let's say, or the, the characteristics of this capacitor and this coil, we are going to have a frequency that is a specific frequency for these circuits. So here we have the concept of transmembrane potential resonance, that is this frequency of this swinging of energy from one, from one uh, element to the other. And then we'll, we'll go to the coherence. So we have many sources of um, electromagnetic signals in our body with many different um, frequencies. And let's continue a little bit. Let's move on to the second concept, that is the pH. I don't know where I have to, to stay so it doesn't resonate so much. Uh, the pH is another important concept when we talk about biochemistry. And at least in my country, it's very trendy to talk about the alkaline diet and everything that is acidic and all the toxins are acidic. OK, so the pH, as you know, is uh, a way of counting, let's say, how many charges are in a solution. So it's a measurement of an electric charge, in this case, a positive charge. So we talk about something that is acidic, when it's something that, in fact, has a lack of negative charges, has a lot of positive charges. So it means that it's lacking electrons. It's a thief of electrons. It's, it's, I want electrons. I want electrons. And then we have something that is alkaline that is exactly the opposite. I have a lot of electrons. Who wants electrons? OK, so something acidic can be understood, understood as an electron thief, free radical, positive pole. Alkaline, electron donor, antioxidant, negative pole. Life is always electron negative. Our pH should be between these two values. And the pH can also be considered as a voltage. You have these devices, and they show you the value of the pH or the value of the voltage. So when we talk, when we talk about the voltage, we are expected to be in our medium in our, um, no, it's not the transmembrane potential, it's the voltage in our, in our uh, environment, between 20, mi minus 20 and minus 30 millivolts. What happens? That if I'm at minus 30 that is healthy, I can have enough an, uh, oxygen from the environment. There is something that is called the Bohr effect that says that if the voltage drops, the ability of the cell to get oxygen also drops. And you know what happens when the cell doesn't have oxygen? That as the main purpose of everything that happens in our body is to be sure that we are going to continue alive, the cell, what it's doing, is changing, is evolving, and it changes the metabolism towards an, an anaerobic metabolism. But the metabolism with oxygen is very efficient. One molecule of fatty acids can, be, can bring me 38 ATPs. But when they, it has lack of oxygen and it changes the metabolism to non, um, uh, without air, anaerobic, it's highly inefficient. So we can understand when the cells start replicating to say we need more, we need more cells to have the same amount of energy. OK, so we can see clearly that metabolism depends on voltage. So when we are talking about um, voltage, we are talking about this minus 13 millivolts is the same as saying that it should be slightly alkaline, we will have a high transmembrane potential, and means that we are going to have enough electrons. This opened the door for many, many different treatments. The change in the pH is a change in the metabolism. And what happens when the environment, the terrain, becomes acidic? That all that microorganisms that live inside us and that probably are part of us, start evolving. Evolving towards what? Toward whatever that helps us to survive. OK, and that's a theory of pleomorphisms. We've been listening today. Sorry that I don't remember the names for me are so difficult. But I think it was Dr. Chopra that was saying that 90% uh, of our cells are bugs, are microorganisms. Our, our, our human cells are only the 10% of our cells. So imagine we're just a structure, and then these 90% of our cells, these bugs are living inside us. 
how can we say that they are not us? <laughs> how can we say that I'm just this ten percent of human being, of human cells, and no, I'm not the rest of that of the cells? So, if life is electric, there are many questions, many, many, many questions that we don't have time to cover now. But the idea is, where does the voltage come from? Where is it stored? Why it drops? Does it drop sometimes? Uh, what are the consequences? How can I measure it? How can I charge it? I mean, there are many, many questions. That is everything about the energy medicine that is in, in the field I'm working. So we know that there are different electromagnetic structures from the nerves. That is the simple one that most of you know. And uh, well, here you have the names of them. It's, I don't want to go so strong on that. But I want to present you one of my superheroes, the superheroes of my galaxy. OK, these are the sciences that have been inspiring what I, what I have learned. Anyone that has this double star means that it's a Nobel Prize. And it's a surprise for me thinking that the Nobel Prize are considered minority science. It's something that I can never understand. So starting with St. Georgi, St. Georgi was a Nobel Prize because of the synthesis of the vitamin C, but then he moved towards energy. And uh, he was the one stating that life is electric, that, that life is an electric proce uh, process. Lakowski was talking about the various resonator and all the different, how each cell is able to understand the context and to pick a signal that make it coherent. Then we have Becker, Berland that are talking about the injury currents and how the body is healing itself and the way that we can help the body to regenerate and to heal just using electric currents. Barburg, you may know, and the interpretation that Jorge Curez Céspedes was doing about the transmembrane potential. You know that a cell that is healthy, its transmembrane potential is about minus 90 millivolts. When the cell becomes chronically sick, it drops to minus 50. When the cell becomes cancerous, it drops to minus 20. And in, in the in division, the cell in division, the cell in mitosis is minus 15. So you can see that it's quite close to, the, to a cell that is cancerous cell. So now we can understand why you can, another way of understanding why a cancerous cell is dividing so quickly because its transmembrane potential, that is a main characteristic of, this, of the cell, is very close to the division potential. So we also understand a quick way to make that this cell stop dividing, just charging this transmembrane potential, we are going to make that this cell stop being in this proliferation uh, rate. Then we have May Wan Ho and Froelich talking about the coherence in the body. We have a Pollack, the Judith and Chaplin, that are the, for me the gurus of the water. They are the ones that are talking how the water, the importance of the water, the biological water, and how the water is the one that is sustaining life electrically in our body. And of course, Benveniste and Luc Montagnier, another Nobel Prize, because of realizing that this same water is able to store the electromagnetic information, and how just with the electromagnetic information of a molecule, we can do the same effect that with the biochemical molecule. OK, this is quite, quite interesting. So we are seeing a little bit this dance of the electrons as a base of our life. Uh, I want to share with you uh, some part of the applications. I'm going to be quick on that because we have had wonderful speakers that have also talked about devices and technologies. So I'm going to share something as a first time that is not exactly electric, but has to do a lot with this paradigm. And the first time I saw that was so shocking that I said, this cannot be true. But then I've seen with my eyes that this is totally true. So I. I want to share this with you, although I know that it's going to be challenging for most of you. And I want to start just sharing uh, the, the situations in which I learned this. Uh, I have a friend that is 43 years old, Carolina, and she came one day and told me, do you remember that I told you that my hip was bothering me? Yes, I remember. So this is the MRI. And the only solution is a hip replacement. Because as you can see here, this is totally destroyed. 
So I told her, oh my God, what can we do? So let's, I'm, I, I work with a Chinese doctor, so let's measure you with the Chinese techniques. I'm going to measure your energy. And you know, they, they have kind of like crazy people from the United States that they say that they see things in the blood. So let's go with them and let's see. So we first go to this uh, weird American people that came to Spain to lecture. And they, they took a, a, a drop of blood put it in the microscope, and that guy started explaining, okay, you know what is the problem? Uh, she has had a surgery because of the virus of the papilloma, so this conization that they do in the cervix, and from the results of that surgery that is suspected to be soft, the, the, you know that the scars are a big issue because they are all the time creating tension, energetically and physically. So due to this scar, the, the sacrum was out of place, and the sacrum out of place made that the hip, made that the, the trochanter was not in the proper place, and this created this problem. So we started uh, treating the scar, not the hip, just the scar. And after one, two sessions was one month and something because we were a little bit late. She was saying, "Wow, I feel so good that everybody is asking me what is happening. That now I work." totally normal. And you know what? I'm going to go to Turkey because I want to be on holidays. OK, take care, because yesterday you couldn't even walk. And now you're saying that you're going to be on holidays. OK, she went on holidays. Yes, I feel much better. And if you walk more than 10,000 steps, take care. Please take care, because you are still recovering. And after the other day, yes, really good, 16 steps. Well, I call this self-abuse. Because if you are recovering and you, don't, and you want to skip a hip replacement, take care. Take things easier. Settle down. But she was so happy because she was able to walk after so many, so many months of suffering because of the pain. So what did these people do? They checked the blood. This is called the Beetleson method. This is called the holographic blood analysis. And what they check is the basics, red blood cells, white blood cells. They also look at the plasma activity, the symbionts. They check the platelets. The plat platelets are the way we heal. They can monitor uh, inflammation using these platelets. See if it's a small, it's something chronic. If it's like an aggregation like this, it's about something that is very acute, so we can see how the body is working. But they don't only see these red blood cells, platelets, fibrin, symbionts, or the plasma activity. They also check holograms. What is holograms? Why? They use a microscope that the light is not crossing the sample. It is a dark field microscope, so the, the, the light is bounced in the sample. So these create holograms of light. And these holograms, the interesting thing is that most of the people that check that microscope consider that they are artifacts, that there is noise. This is something that is something that is not important. But after 60,000 images and 40 years of working with that, Dr. Beagleson realized that in these holograms, they can see many things. They can see the real cause. It's like a language that the body is using to explain what is the body concerned about. So they are seeing things about structure, scars, organs, teeth, or emotions. And this is very difficult to believe. I'm going to show you some pictures of that. So here you have the draw of a knee, and here you have the hologram in the blood of a knee. I think that is quite evident. You can see the coccyx. You can see a femur. When you see this in the blood, it's like, oh my god, this cannot be true. I'm, I'm, and you take another sample, and you see exactly the same image. So then you start thinking, OK, probably the body is trying to tell me something, as it was with my friend Carolina the spinal cord with an injury here. You can see the vertebra, you can see the discs. It's amazing, this kind of images is, is almost unbelievable. Here you can see the scars, different, different kind of scars. Many times the scars are full of debris too. Many times uh, we also see organs in the blood. When we see the organ, most of the time the problem is never the organ. The problem is that the organ is not able to work fine because of pressure of the structure or because of scars or because of teeth or because of emotions. So here you have other pictures of organs, the famous cervix that my friend had the surgery. The kidney, who can doubt that this is a kidney? The nervous system, this is the image in the blood of a, a person that had a problem in the nervous system. And here we have emotions. This 
uh, emotions appear as kind of crystals and they also have colors, many bright colors. So for example, this is a, is a, um, is, it has the shape of a liver and as you can see, it has different colors. Here we have dark, that means lack of energy. You also have red, that means irritation and can also mean anger the system. So this was a final stage of a cancer, liver cancer patient. Okay, uh, well, this is another wonderful image. This is what we call a worry cell. You can see that this is very dark. And this is a sacrum. So when we have this dark old emotion trapped beside the sacrum is the way that Dr. Beagleson understood that this person had an early sexual abuse. This is the way that the body was explaining this history. We can also monitor the way that the body is healing the success of a treatment and it's, pro it's produced something that we call streaking. Streaking is this kind of a streaks <laughs> here. You can see a scar that's being released after a treatment. Here you have another uh, hologram that is being breaking. Sometimes they break. They break up like this, that was a solid one, and then after the treatment, immediately after the treatment, you can monitor if the treatment has been successful or not. This is a wonderful tool for checking the effectivity of our own uh, treatments. And here you have another hologram that is only broken in the middle. So I think that this is quite interesting to show how many times we don't need something that is very invasive, just needle here like the like the like the sugar test in your blood to understand what the body is trying to tell us about what is the real cause of the things that are happening so i come back to the electricity that is my expertise okay so for me electricity is very useful to uh, help us to do this change of the paradigm why because it's extremely easier than biochemistry, where in, in histology, how many kind of cancer you can find? As many as the ones that you can say the name. I mean, you can always take a new name for a new thing that you have found. But in electricity, there is only two kind of cancer and they're treated the same way. So it's extremely useful. One thing that it, for me is extremely inspiring is that when we are thinking in electromagnetic fields or magnetic fields, they never end. They have no finish. There is no skin for the electromagnetic field. So it helps me, it helped me a lot to understand that I don't finish where my, my skin finishes, that I'm a continuous of energy that never ends, that is dumped with distance. That's true. But here, where, tell me, which is the point that I can tell that I stop here, I finish here, and you start there? It's impossible. I don't, I don't have an end. So that means that I'm a whole with all of you, and I'm a whole with environment. So that's very easy to understand with this concept. And here we have an interaction, here we, ha we have an interference. If I understand that I'm an electromagnetic being, and I have no end, I know that every time that I'm here with you, or with any other person, or whatever, wherever I am, I'm all the time interacting. And this interaction is mutual. It's a mutual transformation. Once I leave from here, I'm not going to be the same, and you are not going to be the same. And this is something that we cannot avoid. This is something that is a law, <laughs> that is this way. Every time that a patient comes to see me, I am being transformed, as the patient is. And the transformation or is mutual or is not. So it is better that it is mutual. OK, and it's very simple. There are just a couple of concepts. Transmembrane potential, resonance, coherence. There is nothing else. OK, so it makes that this model for me, it's very easy to implement. And it's extremely useful to also help to create consciousness, to make that we start thinking from another point that help us to find different solutions. And doesn't mean uniformity, doesn't mean that everybody has to think the same, doesn't mean that every one of us has to do the same. It only means that each one of us are going to do the best. I'm going to do my best and each one of you are going to do your best and we are going to do that in a context in which we want the best for all of us. We want to express the life we are. That's why I love so much this uh, concept. This quantum biology and this coherence in the electromagnetic space uh, radiations that we emit endogenously can explain many things, many things that we cannot explain biochemically. 
it can explain all the coordination, the, the energy transfer that is almost immediate, and the extremely high sensitivity that all living beings have towards electric and magnetic signals that are extremely weak. So all of this can be explained, and there are many, many uh, published papers that are talking about the coherence, and the cancer, and coherence, and diseases. And this is a wonderful, wonderful paper from Igor German. That this is the one that I, pre I told you at the beginning that he was doing this lecture of the beginning of life. This is a wonderful thing that explains that we cannot ignore coherence when we are talking about um, diseases. So, as, as you may know, this is a graph of the heart rate variability. Let's apply this concept of coherence as something that we can touch and we can measure. So here we have a person, and here you see this is the heart rate, the beats per uh, second that we have here. And here we have a person that with, is with an emotion that we call, we label as frustration. And you can see that the heartbeat is quite like chaos. When this person is able to change, to shift to another, let's say, positive emotion like appreciation, we see how this becomes coherent, becomes order. Okay, so here we have that it's not only the heart that is becoming order, but also the rest of the physiological signals. We also have the respiration, the blood pressure. So the whole system, so as we can only have coherence if we have more than one signal. If we just have one, there's no coherence with, with whom I'm going to be coherent. Okay, so here we have the difference in the spectrum of appreciation and anger that is totally different. How the different emotions can be also be understood as these kind of electric signals. And when we have this physiological coherence, that means that our whole body is working the better it can work, we have many, many uh, benefits in terms of our own health. Health, physiological, mental, and emotional. Here you can read the list. And we also understand better what is consciousness because I start feeling that I'm a whole, I'm not just an addition of parts. So this feeling consciousness starts when I perceive myself as a whole, and I can, I can have this perception, this self-perception. So um, this uh, physiological coherence opens a door to feel us better as a conscious beings. So at any moment, every instant in your life, your heart and your brain are taking our talking to each other in terms of coherence or incoherence. And you may know that the heart, the electromagnetic field of the heart is 5,000 times stronger than the brain. So if you want that something goes farther, goes stronger, and goes easier, just put your heart in everything that you are doing. And breathe. Before and after breathing, this GDB or BioWell images that are so useful, so pedagogical, so as we can see very easily the effects of everything that we are doing. If I ask you, what do you see here? What do you see here? An eye? Okay, if I tell you, if I explain you how to see the reflection of the building of an eye, next time that I show you this, you're not going to see an eye. You're going to see an eye and the reflection of a building in an eye. Once our perception is open, once we know something, we cannot be just like saying, oh, I don't care about that, because something in you is going to, to pull you all the time for that. That's the beauty of the knowledge and the beauty of being conscious. And the coherence is not only, I told you, we don't finish where our skin finishes. Okay. So we don't finish where our skin finishes. We don't finish. We are connected with everything. We are connected with the sun, to the sun. Here we have the heart rate, variability of a person, and then the environmental side of the solar, geomagne solar and geomagnetic environment. You can see how we are listening, how we are listening all the time the sun and the earth. This is the human's resonance. This is the brain of the earth, the electric field of the earth is like the, the, like the minds of the earth. And these are the alpha and beta and all the different waves in our brain are in the same range. We are listening to the earth. We are, our heart is listening, the heart of the earth. Here we have the power distribution, a long time of the measurement um, 
of the magnetic field and the heart of a person. So you can see how we are all the time connected with the heart that is the magnetic field of the Earth. And this is quite interesting. This is the measurement of the magnetic field that two different um, uh, satellites that are in the, both coasts of the United States. And here you see the variations of the magnetic field. And here there is something that totally changed that. Changed the magnetic field of the Earth and was the 11th September. Okay, the Twin Towers. And listen, what does it mean that the Earth is all the time listening to our own heart? Look at that beauty. It's, uh, for me, it's so inspiring, this. And also the social coherence. I'm going to be very fast because this, I don't have more time. But uh, when once I'm coherent in myself, I can spread that coherence to the environment and we can create the social coherence. That means we can help the rest to also work the best they can do that. Uh, and I just want to finish with this. This is old. This is an old paper, but I love it. I love it so much that I want to share that with you. This is a paper that says International Peace Project in the Middle East. This is from 1988. 40 experiments that will change the world and have already changed our world. I just go for the 19th one research 19th. We are in the 80s, we are in the middle of the conflict between Israel and Lebanon, and they make that, that some people from that are masters in transcendental, transcendental meditation go to Israel and they check the number of dead people. So here you see the number of dead people and here you see the number of people meditating. And you can clearly see how the bigger the bigger the group is, the, meditate, uh, the meditating group is, the lower the war intensity is. This is, a, this is the intensity of the war and this is the size of the group that is meditating. The more people are meditating, the less people are dying. This is shocking. For me, it was totally shocking reading this. 70% decrease number of people dying, 70% decrease of people that are wounded. So what does it mean? We can stop the wars. We can do everything. We can change the world. How? Just breathe. Just find your peace. Just connect with your wisdom. Just be the best version of yourself. And just being that, you don't even do, need to do anything with the rest of the people. It's just what you are. It's not what we do. It's what we are. So just being the best of ourselves, we are going to change the world, we are going to stop everything. So now is the moment to do this reflection. Where are we? What are we going to do? This is true. This is also true. Let's stop fighting. Let's stop fighting about points of view because it can even happen that this is hollow. <laughs> so it can be super interesting that. So let's stop fighting against nature. Let's stop fighting against ourselves. Let's just focus on being the best versions of ourselves. Thank you very much for your attention, for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anna Marie. She's come all the way from Spain just for this conference and she's flying back. The only thing I want to say is that she's here on Monday. So anybody who wants a workshop, a shorter workshop of what she does, uh, you do something in heart? Would you like to explain that? In? That heart thing that you did. Yes, ah, yes, we can.